All right, guys, welcome back to another Master Apprentice video and podcast. With the ending of Bad Batch Season 3, it brings us to the end of this series in totality, um, which is unfortunate. I was really growing attached to these characters in this series as a whole. Um, but with all of that, we're going to give you a review of Season 3 of Bad Batch and just the whole series in general. So without further ado, we'll get right into the review. So to start off with, I think the pacing of this season was better than the first two seasons for the most part. Uh, season one ended and started really great, but the middle of season one was pretty slow. Almost all filler, just kind of getting to know the characters, right? And season two was a little bit all over the place. Um, it kind of seemed like whenever they dropped two episodes, we'd get a lot of development at a time. And then whenever they dropped one episode, it was just like a filler episode. Season three was unique in the way that like the first half of the season just moved the pace of the plot and everything forward very, very fast and very well. Um, I really enjoyed the first half of season three. It was like a 10 out of 10 almost. Like every episode was very fun, interesting, and mysterious all at the same time. And in the second half of season three, um, there was definitely more fillers. There were some very fun episodes in there for sure, but I feel like there's a lot more fillers and just some time to kill. Um, which is a little bit unfortunate, especially because we were approaching the finale of the whole series as a whole. You would think they kind of give it more of a buildup, but nonetheless, they really didn't. Uh, with all that being said, though, the finale was absolutely amazing. The lead up to the finale, like I said, was a little bit slower, I felt like, but when the finale came, we were a little bit like, you know, nervous, I guess you could say, just because we didn't know what to expect with the lead up kind of being filler episodes for the most part. And I, I think it's safe to say it didn't disappoint. I think the finale did the whole series and season three justice. I think it was a very good send off. And I was a big fan of the finale for season three. Um, I know some people were a little bit skeptical about it and how they still feel about it. But right off the top, I've had 24 hours to think about it. I, I still really enjoyed it. I love the way they sent the characters that we've come to love, just kind of the way they sent them off. Um, it also showed that you don't need to kill off a main character uh, to to give you emotions, right? It showed the good guys can win and still in, in the midst of all this evil in the Empire, right? And I really did enjoy the finale. Um, I've tried to uh, leave out spoilers for the most part. So if you don't want any spoilers, go ahead, click off or kind of skip to the end where I get my final review. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about the spoilers of the finale and the rest of season three. So with that being said, I think the finale did a really good job um, of closing off the threat of the whole Bad Batch series, but also making it feel like it was still important and not too easy, right? Um, Admiral Rampart, um, Dr. Carr, Dr. Hemlock, right? Some of these main antagonists that have been part of the series for a while, they all, I feel like, had a very fair end, um, and I, I, they felt important, and I thought it was handled very well. And in the meantime, I thought it the send off to a different, you know, to Project Stardust was perfect. And uh, if you don't know, if you haven't read any of the other novels or comics, Project Stardust is the Death Star, right? That's what that's referring to. And Tarkin was the head of that. He was in charge of the finances for Project Stardust. So it was a perfect send off when Tarkin says divert all funds from Project Necromancer to Project Stardust. It made sense. And it was kind of cool to see that. And I, I love that they didn't really kill any of the protagonists, but they still gave them lots of trials and tribulations through the season and especially in the finale of season three, especially for people like Crosshair and Hunter and Wrecker, you know, the three main guys who, who are left after Tech's death. I just thought they did them justice, right? And with all that being said, I think that a character development for the season three and just the whole series was really good. Um, they went from being kind of goofy characters, especially Omega. She was kind of an annoying character, if I'm being frank, when she was first introduced, to the end where they save her out in the rain on, on Tantus, and they shoot Hemlock, and he falls off the edge, and she runs up to them. It felt very cool. I, I guess that's the best way to say it. It's like For an animation, it felt cool. I didn't feel like a dork or a nerd for watching an animation. It felt like a cool scene that could be in any other situation any live action or any other fan watching it and they could say the same thing it was a cool scene um and it that was part and due because of all the character development of all of them crosshair especially right he made a 
bit of a disappearance in season two for the most part. He was still there here and there, but he wasn't really involved a whole lot. Where in season three, he made a big comeback and they gave him a lot more development and it showed at the end. And I was a big fan of Crosshair. And Omega, I mean, especially with the end where she joins the Rebellion, uh, you know, years after the events of the Bad Batch season three, I made me emotional. I was like, dang, she's all grown up. And I, I love the way they sent them off. I, I feel like they did a good job of making the characters feel important, but also not having too big of an impact on the whole franchise and story of Star Wars. Um, the final bit of it where they, they hide all on the planet Pad, Pabu and they grow old there and then eventually Omega leaves them to go fight in the Rebellion. I think that was a really good idea and I'm glad they did that. It just showed the perspective perspective of omega and you know she wasn't annoying she was always just willing to fight and it was part and dude because of her model role models her brothers right the bad batch and it was also really cool to see like the older brother slash father figure that the bad batch played in omega's life and overall i just think the, the dynamic of the relationships and the characters just really shined in the finale and season three overall i think they did a really good job some some downers is there's there's quite a bit of questions still unanswered right you know some simple ones for instance is what really happened with crosshair's hand like why was it twitching why did he have a hard time i mean they never really explained it they gave us a couple ideas but they never explained it headlock what was with that gloved hand that he would kind of massage or like grope for some reason that never really got answered. Some bigger questions. Commander Cody. We saw him be a deserter in Season 2. We figured we'd see him return in Season 3, but we didn't. And we don't know what happens with him. Uh, Rex and all the rogue clones, like Wolf and Gregor. Like, what happens to that whole part of the clones after, right? We still have quite a bit of questions from where we leave Bad Batch to where we pick up in Rebels, right? There's still a lot of unanswered questions. Asajj. I mean, that seems like the biggest question of all is, you bring back a legacy character that was dead and, and killed off in a novel, and then you don't give us much explanation, and you don't give us much more development, that leaves a lot of questions to be answered. Um, and I get that was a point for some of these, but it was kind of a downer. It was like it took away from some of the other stuff, like enjoying the actual moment of the finale. It's like, oh, what happened? So what was wrong with Hemlock's hand? It, you know, was it a robot hand or like just some simple things like that? But uh, overall, it's kind of hard to give this a bad rating. Season three, especially because of the finale. And this is overall the season. It, it's like any of the other animated projects that Star Wars has done. Rebels, Clone Wars. Starts off goofy, but ends dramatic and serious. And in a very serious manner that keeps you interested in these characters forever and ever. Um, so with all of that being said, I think I'm going to give season three a rating of seven point five out of ten i really did enjoy it i actually think it's probably the best season um the best episode still belongs to season one episode one obviously but i think bad batch overall as a season just brought the characters together better than any of them and i think we fell more in love with these characters because of season three so overall i think season three was the best season and i really enjoyed it eight out of ten for me and with the the finale of this series i'm going to give the series a nine out of 10. Um, I think the series is really good. And I know that's probably a victim of the moment kind of rating, uh, but it's kind of hard to give anything else. You know, it's like if I gave bad batch a different rating than clone wars or rebel is significantly worse or lower. It wouldn't seem right because I put these in the same categories. I put those uh, very enjoyable. And I, I I'm very excited to see, you know, what Dave Filoni does next with the animated projects. We know he's working on some sort of animation project in the Clone Wars st style. We don't really know too much else about it, but boy, I hope it's related to these characters and even this time because um, I, I just really grew fond of this series and these characters. Um, even Omega, you know, like, like I said, Omega was a character that was very annoying. Every time she would talk or show up, I would roll my eyes to where at the end, I was very sad to see her be sent off. And uh, yeah, I, I, I know it's not the end of her story, so I'm very excited to see where they take her and the rest of the Bad Batch and some of the other characters. Let me know what you guys think of this season as a whole and the series as a whole down in the comments. Do you guys agree with us, disagree? 
Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys thought. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And if you guys are listening on podcasts, we deeply appreciate it. It helps out a lot. Don't forget to hit that download and follow. And with that, we will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.